Hi guys and welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. So about a year or so ago, some of you may remember if you are like OG subscribers, I filmed a video where I talked you through the luxury items that I had once owned but had since rehomed, so sold and that I've left my collection. And I shared my thought processes and reasons behind yeah, letting those items go. Since then, there have been a couple of changes to my collection, not only new additions, which I already talked about in one of my previous videos, where I showed you all the items I bought since September 2020. But today's video is going to focus on basically an update to my last video on luxury items I sold and why. Yeah, just to give you an update. And yeah, hopefully this video is helpful in case you're currently contemplating getting a specific item that I'm about to talk about. Maybe I'm gonna mention a few like drawbacks and cons that you might have not been aware of before. So hopefully this video can help you in your decision making process. Yeah, I guess let's get started. But before we do, hi, my name is Leslie in case you're new here. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. On my channel, I talk about luxury, both fashion and obviously handbags, which is my guilty pleasure, I guess. Mm -hmm. Hauls in case I happen to buy something, shopping vlogs, reviews, what's in my bag, all that good stuff. So yeah, if that sounds intriguing to you, I would love it if you consider subscribing and also thumb up this video. I know everyone asks you to do that. And I mean, we are like, what, one or two minutes into the video. You don't even know if you like it yet, but just as a quick reminder, if you enjoy my video, later down the line while you're watching please give it a thumbs up that would help me out tremendously but now let's get started i'm gonna start with slgs then we'll talk about handbags and then yeah miscellaneous stuff at the end of the video so let's go in terms of slgs i actually have a total of four items to talk you through which i'm kind of proud of because especially in like 2018, 2019, I fell into the small leather good trap. So I'm really happy to have downsized my SLG collection. And I'm actually still in the process of kind of narrowing my SLG collection down. And yeah, I'm trying to figure out which additional items to sell. But for the time being, I have four items to show you. Starting with the LV Zippy wallet right here. So this giant, like long continental size wallet that I actually found on Vestia Collective for such a great deal. I think I paid around 200 bucks, including shipping and their authentication fee, which is amazing because new, I think the Zippy wallet comes in at, I wanna say like 550, ridiculous, but even still the pre-loved price was a good chunk of money for a wallet, if you think about it. Now, if you had asked me like, two to three years ago and um, what my ideal wallet would look like. The Zippy wallet would have definitely been it. Just super long, thousands of card slots and additional compartments, slip compartments, zipper compartments, you name it. You could even fit your phone unless you have a very bulky phone case. Yeah. Fast forward to now or like a year or so ago, my current wallet situation is vastly different. Actually, I carry my LV monogram reverse card holder that holds like my most important card. So debit card, credit card, um, my ID, that's about it. And in addition to that, I have my LV clay in the monogram canvas where I keep a little bit of cash, but not a lot and some additional cards. But yeah, there's definitely no need anymore for me, at least for such a huge wallet, especially given that I hardly carry cash anymore. And most of my like reward cards and yeah, membership cards are actually digitalized on an app on my iPhone. So yeah, there was just no need to keep such a huge wallet because I don't foresee me going back to carrying such a ginormous wallet anytime soon. Plus it took up quite a bit of space in most of my handbags. So yeah, that's basically the reason why I let the Zippy wallet go and Given that I scored such a good deal on Vestia Collective when I had bought it, I actually think I made about 50 bucks selling it. So that was great too. The next two items I decided to let go of are actually basically the same thing, just in two different colors. And I'm talking about my Hermes Bastia coin purses. And again, photos or videos will be on the screen. And it did take me quite a while to recognize and yeah, be honest with myself and realize that those coin purses as cute as they might be and as beautiful as the colors are i just didn't have a use for them i didn't want to use them as coin purses per se again because i hardly carry cash and i'd rather have like a zipped 
way of storing my coins and cash and that would be my Louis Vuitton Cle where I at the same time keep a couple of cards and I guess I also bought them in the first place for the wrong reasons because I like the colors and frankly I thought they would look so cute on like Instagram flat lace which they do don't get me wrong I love the pops of colors they are at an entry-level price tag for Hermes which I think for a lot of people place into the decision to buy them because yeah they are cheap big quotation marks there for MS standards but when you think about it even 170 euros sitting in your closet and not being used is kind of a waste of money so at the end of the day I knew that letting them go and rehoming them was the right decision but again and that obviously applies to all the items I'm talking about in this video just because they didn't work out for me doesn't mean that they are a bad purchase or that I would advise you from staying away from them or selling yours if you happen to own the same thing. Obviously it's all personal preference and yeah just thought I'd share my experience and my opinion. And the last SLG that I decided to part ways with is actually the Louis Vuitton toiletry pouch 26 in the monogram canvas. Now I know that item is super popular, always sold out or almost always sold out and ever since I bought it I think in like mid 2018 the price had gone up tremendously which was great for me because I actually made 50 bucks roundabout while still being below the current price tag when you were to buy it in the boutique so I was happy the buyer was happy and I was happy that I had come to the conclusion that I didn't really need a toilet G26. Obviously you don't need any luxury items, we all know that, but you get where I'm coming from. I just think the reasons why I decided to purchase the toilet G26 to begin with were kind of off because one of the main contributors into me deciding to purchase it was that I knew that it was a hot item that a lot of people wanted and yeah, that had always been sold out on the website and in store. One like Sunday morning, I scrolled through the Louis Vuitton website and I saw that the toiletry 26 was available and I was like, okay, whatever, just buy it and think about it later. Yeah, well, the thinking about it later part took me about two years or so. Um, obviously, I didn't return it because I thought, yeah, it's cute and it's affordable-ish and I'm definitely gonna use it as a clutch and look like so cute and stylish. I know a lot of people aren't really a fan of carrying the toiletry 26 as a clutch, Cassie Thorpe being one of them. And yeah, what can I say? I didn't wear it as a clutch ever. And I didn't use it as a toiletry bag either because I didn't feel like putting makeup and stuff that could spill or like powder that could go everywhere inside such an expensive item. So yeah, at the end of the day, it, it should have been an easier decision than it was to sell the item. But now that it has left my collection, I'm really happy it did. So that was it for the SRGs that have left my collection. I don't think I particularly need to film an updated SRG collection video. I'm gonna leave the one that I filmed last year down in the description box in case you're interested because apart from the items that I just talked about and the Louis Vuitton monogram reverse card holder, there haven't been any changes, but feel free to let me know if you want me to film an updated video regardless. Anyway. SLGs, check. Now let's get into handbags, shall we? And I have two handbags to talk about, both of which might surprise you a little bit for different reasons. Number one is my Speedy Bondoliere in Damier Ben in the size 35. That was actually my second ever expensive or like luxury handbag. The first one having been my Neverfull, which I bought in 2014, if I'm not mistaken. And the Speedy was purchased a year later. So like August, 2015. And it's not that I didn't wear the Speedy that much, but at the end of the day, I didn't wear it enough for me to warrant keeping the bag. Maybe it was the size, because while I'm a tall girl and the 35 did look proportionate, it still was a little big for my liking and tended to look like a gym bag, especially without a base shaper or even with an organizer. You always had this like sagging of the bag, regardless of how you stuff it. It did take me a little while to come to terms with the fact that after like what almost six years of owning the bag, it might be time to yeah pass it on and give it to a new home that will enjoy and cherish it more than I do because maybe my style has changed, I don't know. Apart from the yeah, reasons I mentioned earlier, maybe I'm not that much of a fan of the Louis Vuitton Damier Ben anymore, which is crazy considering that back when I bought my Neverfull and my Speedy, I was like, okay, 
if I buy Louis Vuitton, it's only gonna be Damier Ben and the LV monogram canvas looks so tacky. And at this point, I mean, the LV monogram can look a little in your face, but for example, my Pochette Matisse obviously is in monogram canvas and I love that bag to pieces. So yeah, it's just interesting how styles and tastes change. So yeah, the Speedy left my collection earlier this year and I have zero regrets. And the second bag that I have sold and the reason why I told you, you might be surprised, maybe, I don't know, maybe not, is a bag that I have never showed on my channel. And I'm talking about a vintage Chanel one. Not my Chanel medallion tote. I love that bag to pieces and it's not gonna leave my collection anytime soon, but I'm talking about the Chanel Kelly top handle. Again, photos will be on the screen. <sighs> that was quite the process actually. I did purchase the bag in August 2019. Right before I took my final exams, I was super stressed out and yeah, the amount of emotional shopping I did in that period of time was a little concerning, but I was down to taking any kind of tiny source of endorphins and serotonin that I could get my hands on. So yeah, I ended up buying a vintage Chanel bag on Vestia Collective. It arrived, it looked beautiful, it had a tiny flaw on the handle, but that was something I was aware of and that had been reflected in the price as well. But then after my exams, I went to San Francisco and obviously I didn't take my vintage Chanel with me. And when I returned, I had another oral exam. So yeah, a lot of time and preparation went into that. And yeah, basically ever since I bought it until I'd say like March, 2020, I didn't really wear the bag and once I, finally decided to bust out the bag and yeah style it in a couple of different ways i just realized that maybe maybe the kelly top handle from chanel wasn't really my kind of style so i decided to sell it and let me tell you i could film an entire story time video about that because while the buyer was super nice really understanding and stuff she obviously because she also was aware of the flaw that yeah was on the handle she decided to take the bag to chanel and they basically said yeah we're pretty sure that's a fake one and i was like she was like oh my god obviously i guess pretty embarrassing and like overwhelming to be standing in the chanel boutique and the sa being like yeah that's not a product of ours um she came back to me I was freaking out. I contacted Vestiaire. We had the bag sent back to Vestiaire for them to double check it, yada, yada, yada. At the end of the day, it turned out that it was indeed an authentic bag. And my buyer at the end of the day had the bag sent to Chanel in France to have the handle repaired and came back repaired. So basically that's the sign of approval from Chanel without them explicitly saying it, that it is in fact an authentic bag because they wouldn't have repaired a counterfeit item. but. Man, that that was quite the ordeal and super stressful for me, but also for the buyer. But she was super pleasant and um, yeah, we follow each other on Instagram and maybe you're watching this video. Hi. Yeah, that kind of put me off of buying stuff from Vestia for a while. I've returned to buying from them and I'm pretty confident in their authentication service. Plus at the end of the day, also the Kelly top handle turned out to be an authentic item and basically it was all the Chanel essays fault. But yeah, sorry, I didn't even want to go into that much detail. Let me know if you want me to film a dedicated video. Obviously I have to pre-check with my buyer if she's comfortable with me talking about this stuff. Obviously I'm not gonna name her or share her Instagram. But yeah, again, let me know if that would be something you'd be interested in. Okay, I feel like I've rambled on way too long already. So we're gonna keep it short and sweet and do basically a quick fire round on the rest of the items. First one being a Chanel brooch. This one right here. So like this super cute and tiny round brooch. At the end of the day, it was beautiful. It was kind of an Instagram made me buy it purchase, but I didn't really wear it because A, I'm not that much of a brooch person. Plus with this white one, I was super terrified that I would get the surface. So this like white material, don't even know what exactly the material was, but it was kind of a rough texture. So I figured if I touched the brooch with like makeup-y hands or stuff, that would stain the brooch beyond repair basically. I did take quite a hit because apparently everyone else that looked at the brooch was a little smarter than me in terms of thinking, okay, that's not the most practical brooch, plus it was pretty small, but taking a loss was still better than having, I think like 360 euros is what I paid for it and I got about 300, so yeah, still better than having 
that amount of money tied into a brooch that I'm not wearing sitting in my closet. So I let the brooch go and I'm super happy about that. The next item I decided to finally let go of is my Dior Oblique Mitza. So yeah, Mitza is basically the Dior version of the Hermes Trulis or the Louis Vuitton Pandos. It did take me quite a while to come to terms with the fact that buying the Dior Mitza in the first place wasn't really a smart idea because I purchased it in San Francisco, so in the US. And buying European brands in the US is just, yeah, who does that? Especially when you come from Europe and you have access to these brands at lower prices. So I vastly overpaid and in addition to that, while the Mitza looked beautiful, I didn't really have a use for it. Yeah, says the girl with a couple of twillies that aren't used either. But I feel like amongst the different fashion houses, takes on twillies, Mitza, Spendos, what have you, the Hermes twillies are definitely the best and I didn't really use the Mitza and I wasn't obsessed with the oblique pattern either. So selling it was the sensible and right thing to do. The next item that left my collection is my Louis Vuitton denim shawl in black. So basically this like gray and space gray, dark gray, whatever colorway. At the end of the day, I did like it, but I didn't love it. The monogram was quite in your face and I didn't I didn't really feel comfortable with such a huge and voluminous scarf and monogram all over. Again, personal preference if you like the look of the scarf and some of you really style it so beautiful and elegantly, but I didn't end up wearing it that often. Plus I was terrified of getting makeup stains on it. That happened once and the whole washing and cleaning and drying process was super like lengthy and I didn't want to deal with that. Plus LV scarves are known for getting snags and like runs and pulls in the scarves. So I decided when I'm not really in love with the scarf anyway, better sell it now while the condition is pretty pristine still and recoup most of my money, which I did because again, I had purchased the LV scarf pre-loved. So I didn't end up losing any money. I think I, I want to say I got around the same amount back from selling it that I had spent when I purchased it. So yeah, that was great too. And the last item I want to talk about today I can't believe we're almost at the end of the video and thank you so much to everyone who's still around and still watches. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do and give this video a thumbs up. Sorry for the little like interruption. But anyway, back to the video. And the last item I want to talk about is actually something that I almost forgot I had owned at one point because I only owned for a very brief period of time and that is a pair of Chanel sunglasses. Again, a pre-love purchase. I had bought them on Vestia Collective as well. And I guess it just came down to realizing that buying sunglasses online isn't the smartest idea because maybe I didn't really look at the measurements or the measurements that had been provided by the seller had been off kind of. Anyway, it just looked way too small on my face. And also the color was not really what I had expected. I had expected them to be like a lovely shade of brown and they were brown but with definite red undertones and I don't know I wasn't really a fan of that so basically unboxed them tried them on decided that they weren't for me obviously with vestiaire unless you're buying via vestiaire from a professional seller you can't just return items unless they are faulty or yeah inauthentic so yeah I took photos listed them on eBay ended up selling them and obviously zero regrets because buying them in the first place was kind of a regret so there you have it that was my updated luxury items I sold in Y video I hope I shared a couple of aspects that you maybe weren't aware of in terms of yeah, items that you're currently looking into buying or maybe my video was like the final push in your decision to let go of some items that you had been contemplating selling for a long time. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out my other videos and again, if you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!